What's going on guys? It is our next installment of Tour Player Tuesdays and today we are looking at Xander Schauffele. Alright guys, so I'm not the biggest dude but he's another one of these guys who use incredible leverage, mechanics, ground forces to get up over 180 ball speed and be super consistent whilst doing so. Okay, so we're going to focus in on his tempo, how the swing kind of manifests, how he goes through the moon pans, how he creates that speed and also two triggers in the swing that he's utilizing to maximize performance and we all know he's one of the most consistent players out there guys, alright? So tempo and triggers, let's get into it. Okay guys, so looking at what we have here, we got a nice cool angle going on in terms of seeing what we're looking at today. Okay, so first of all, you can see really subtle at the start, okay, we're talking about the triggers in the swing, and triggers are something that are going to help you to repeat your process, repeat the motion as effectively as possible. Literally a little trigger in the mind fires everything off. And what you can see here, again, pretty subtle, but the thumb is off the grip of the right hand. As soon as he's good to go, you're going to see that thumb twitches on, and then it's go time. Okay, from there, we take the club away. Okay, we're going to look at that on the mat later on, but a little trigger like that tells your mind that you're ready to go. It's time to hit the shot. and takes away some of the static and kind of nervous energy whilst you're over the ball. Okay, so that's trigger number one. Trigger number two He's going to be more at the top of the swing, okay? And this is something that I think Xander has only incorporated over the last, not so long, anyway. We get to the top of the swing, and we get that left heel lift, all right? And players always ask if that's all right. Yeah, it's absolutely fine, guys, right? It's another power source, and also it's big for your proprioceptive awareness, because as you lift the lead heel and then replant, you know where the ground is, you know where your force is going, it just exaggerates that pattern. Okay, so that's trigger number two, because as you can see, we get to the top of the swing here. Once we then start to lift that heel, that's the basis of the transition. Okay, we lift the heel off the ground, complete the top of the swing, push down into the ground, and once that left heel is reconnected, it's go time. Okay, two big triggers to match with that tempo. This is good stuff, guys. All right, let's check out a different angle. Okay, guys, really cool, clear view down the line here, okay? So, as we look through the swing, we've looked at those triggers. We're going to get into those later on. Let's talk about the tempo, okay? So, again, not the biggest guy. Really cool to see the gradual development of force and speed, guys, right? So, again, there's lots of different types of swings. There's lots of different tempos, ratios that you can really look at. But what we want to talk about in terms of tempo is being able to load the body fully and stay loaded and under tension at the top of the swing. Okay, and by that we're looking at this position. That means the body is still engaged, we're fully loaded, but we're not rushing. Okay, and the transition is often the hardest part of the swing because if you get that wrong, you're going to lose body position, you're going to lose face control. It's, it's going to get a little... It's going to get a little wild out there, okay? So in terms of tempo, what we're really focusing on is the ability to turn fully to the top, complete the backswing, and then combined with those triggers we talked about before, start to transition down, okay? And he does it better than pretty much anyone. You can see this, again, like we did with Ram last week, there's a slight bowing of the left wrist, and this matched with that completed swing, trigger of the lower body, and that big push out of the ground means the shallowing pattern is just next level. All right, guys, and in terms of hitting driver well, if you can use your tempo here and then use the ground and rotate like this, you're going to drive it well more often than not. You can see how wide open that hip is right here. The right arm's tucked, the left arm is leading, the club is behind the hands, and then it's just release. Okay, guys, so up and out of it. We know all of those swing factors, but really, once we get that trigger going on, we get to the top. There's no rushing transition. You stamp that left foot down as a trigger and then turn to the target and you watch it full speed it's just on point guys okay fully load get to the top stay under tension and then drive it down guys all right got one more angle then we're gonna get into some coaching 
Okay guys, so now we got the angle front on, slightly off camera. Again, it allows us to check over everything that we just looked at. Okay, and one of the things we're gonna look at again is gonna be in the gym. We're gonna look at the tension up to the top of the swing and how we stay loaded into that powerful position. All right, and you can see here, this is now into an iron swing. There's no rush at any point. Okay, and that's that gradual development of force. That's how you use the full body, you get the sequence going. That's what we should all be trying to work towards, guys. Right? You can max out on speed, but you've got to get the sequence right, and that is where your tempo comes in so often. Okay, so you see here we go to the top. Because we then lead with the lower body, the hips clear, the arms pull down, and just that impact position is just going to be good the whole time, guys. All right, so again, we're going to look at the top of the swing position, how to retain structural tension essentially, which means the muscles are engaged at the top, and we're gonna match it up to these triggers so that you can directly implement these factors into your game on the range or on the course. And again, you can see the triggers here. You see that that right thumb is off the grip. There's that little lift. Once it fires back on, it's then go time. Okay, again, that's a neurological switch. You put it on, it's good to go. Okay, there's no left heel lift with the iron. It's not necessary on the, on the mid iron that we're looking at here. And we're just going to drive into the ground. Okay, guys. So let's have a look at these triggers. Let's get something built into your game so that you can swing like Xander. You can trigger your swing like Xander. And then also, we're going to develop that toe tempo, guys. All right. Let's head to the map. Okay, guys. Looking at triggers that you can implement into your swing. Okay, so. These are kind of personal, they have to make sense to you and they have to be something that just becomes a habit, okay? But essentially the basics are one that's gonna get you to start the swing, initiate, which for Xander is that right thumb on and off, that little trigger, and then the second is to start your downswing, okay? Again, which is that left heel lift and plant, okay? So we'll have a little look at those now and why they work and then start to test things out. There might be little things that you already do that you can bring more awareness to, or there's something you can develop into your swing, okay? But essentially, you need something before you hit, because a lot of golfers, it's easy to get stuck over the ball, okay? We get more and more static, and if you're really not confident, your heart rate's gonna go up, you're gonna get more and more nervous when we stood over the ball, and then it actually becomes hard to start the swing, okay? If we can get set, keep active with the feet, and then have that final little trigger, once we lift, hit, and then take it away, your brain knows that once that happens, it's go time, okay? It takes away some of that doubt, it takes away some of those elements of, like I said, tension, nervousness, that we don't really want in the swing, okay? And then in terms of the tempo, we're gonna look at loading to the top and making sure we complete when we get into the gym section, but essentially, by lifting that left foot and then taking your time to complete the swing here, we know that we're fully loaded, the right side of the body, absolutely engaged, the muscles is stretched and ready to function. And then once we start to pull that left foot back down, the club can then naturally stay more behind us. That's our sequence. And then once that left foot's planted, we use that sequence to just drill it to the target. Okay, so again, if we take through a shot now, we get set, we stay nice and active. We're gonna use that right thumb to create the first trigger. And then we're gonna use that left heel lift to drill it, guys, right? So staying active, get set. A little low on the face, guys, right? But what you see there, once you trigger, you take it away, we get to the top, and we plant down, guys, right? So these are two really cool ways to get your swing more and more consistent and to get you moving, moving more and more in a positive manner towards performance, guys. All right, so now we're gonna look at two really simple banded exercises that we use all the time that's gonna enhance your ability to get into a loaded position and then use it into that sequence as well. Okay, guys, so now we're in the gym and we're gonna look at two banded movements that we use often to get you into that loaded position understand the awareness of loading and creating tension right up and across the body, and then a separate movement that's gonna increase your ability to sequence, to load, and to use those triggers in the gym setting to enhance your ability to do so when you got a club in your hands, guys. All right, so number one is gonna be the swing arc pump drill, okay? Do this on both sides of the body, and yeah, this is gonna be effective for pretty much all golfers, guys, okay? So, got some nice high lateral tension, we're gonna get into our golf posture, and the key here is a two 
let the band take you into that really fully rotated position. So as you wind back, let that band just stretch back, get into a fully loaded position, so your foot's working against the ground, your torso is rotating around the spine, creating that tension, creating that stretch, and then engage, okay? So we're fully loaded at the top, we take our time just like we would do with the tempo of the swing, and then we drive into that lower body. So pull down and pull that hip around, guys. All right, so load, take your time, turn, okay? And don't try and do this too fast. Really slow down here, so it's almost like a slow back swing, eccentric loading, up to the top, up to the top, and then transition, okay? That's that tempo that we're talking about with Xander's swing. We get to the top, down, and go. Okay, so with the additional tension of the bands, we're getting more and more feedback from the end range, and we're getting more and more function across the body. Okay, so how we then deliver that is going to really define how well we hit the ball and how much distance we can create. Okay, so now we're going to take that different level of tension, and we're going to put it into a step two press, guys. Okay, so this one, we're already under tension here. We're going to use that trigger, okay? It's an enhancement of that trigger that Xander's using in the swing. We're going to lift and plant that lead foot, okay? So once we do so, just like we talked about with the swing earlier, once that foot's planted, we know that then we can create force, rotate the hips, and fire, okay, guys? So nice and dynamic, staying active with the feet, plant, rotate, fire. And this, this is going to help you to create that sequence, create force, but also it's going to enhance your ability to use that as a trigger, guys, all right? Because if you get used to that plant and then rotate, you're going to then enhance your ability to do so, guys, all right? So again, lots of tension, lots of awareness. We step, plant, rotate, and fire, guys, all right? So really simple on the drills. Because those are things that you can put into your game pretty much straight away, guys. Right? Again, they do not have to be the same as Xander Schauffele. However, that's a good place to start, guys. Right? Test things out. Find what works for you. And then banded movements in the gym. Okay? Let's get that awareness. Let's get that feedback. And then let's deliver it in a much, much more applicable fashion so you can boost your game, guys. All right? This is Tour Player Tuesdays. Xander Schauffele is here to help you out, guys. All right? There's an awful lot to learn. So go ahead. Try this out. Let us know how it goes. Drop us some feedback. Hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe. And then check out everything that we're doing, guys. All right? So that you can golf strong.